Hello. Been having a bit of trouble with this um, white Volvo of mine. Um, it's been pissing down with rain the night before last, uh, all the time, and the Volvo was out parked in the, the drive as it always is. I didn't notice anything. I, I went to lunch in a pub where I go every day, and. Uh, after I'd had my lunch, the landlord said to me, these are a couple of walkers who are walking on the South Downs Way. They've got absolutely soaked. Could you run them down to uh, Meonstoke, where the next they booked a and b um, So I said, fine. So the three of us traipsed back to my car, and I opened the driver's door, and I saw that there was at least two inches of water sloshing about in the passenger well. Footwell. Um... And uh, these two walkers, they got in the back, and he said to me, look, I think it's, it's leaking from the windscreen. So I've had to recover this situation, and that's what this video is about. This is a Volvo XC60 2011. Well, that's the front carpet uh, upside down after I've taken it out. This foam is the thing that gets absolutely saturated. I could easily dry the top of the carpet, but it doesn't really help because it's, it's rubberized here. Um, so how the water gets underneath this carpet, I don't know. It must go straight through it somehow, but then once it's got down there, it's not going to come out in a hurry. So I've got to dry that off properly. Well, that's looking into the passenger door. Um, I thought I'd just explain some of the finer points of getting the carpet out. This bit goes in here and it just unclips, you can just pull it out more or less starting at the bottom. You can see the kind of clips it's got on it. This bit goes up there and likewise can be pulled out, you can lever this one up from the bottom and then pull this one out sideways. This is, go, has got a light on it, and it goes underneath the uh, glove compartment and is held on by two tor T20 torque screws there. Those, those screws, these screws. So you just undo those screws and pull it out, and then you can unclip the light. Um, that helps to get the carpet out from here. This is the trim that goes on the sill there, it just comes up upwards. And this is a duct which fits like that. There are two ducts here. This one is above the level of the carpet and it discharges air underneath the seat. This one is underneath the carpet and runs in this dip, which is the fatal design feature of the whole thing. Where it goes to, I don't know. Um, but the problem is that water in the front here can go through this, either through the duct or underneath the duct. So you can see, you probably can see my fingers are wet there. Um, into the, the back uh, passenger side just making life doubly difficult. Before taking the front carpet out, you've got to undo the front mounting bolts of the uh, passenger seat. And before doing that, I disabled the front airbag, because I didn't want to be punched in the face if I made a mistake. So before you can undo these bolts using a 13 millimeter socket set. Um, you've got to get this clip off which sits in there um, on top of the carpet. Just worth noting the exact structure of this clip. It's got a tab on the front which merely stops it from coming upwards because it fits under there but it, it doesn't retain it in any way. It's retained by these two clips here which clip into 
that slot and that slot. So to put it back, let me just do that. Now to get it out again, what you've got to do, I'm not sure I can do this, I can't really do this from my, this side, but you've got to get under here and just lever it up. And it comes out like that and hopefully it doesn't break. No, it hasn't broken, so lever up one side or the other or possibly both if it's difficult. Um, so I parked the car on a hill so that it's facing downwards like this a bit and um, I've dried out this slot here where most of the water was and uh, also under here quite a lot of water in this, this harness, hopefully it's not better. So it's dry. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to stand in the, behind the passenger seat on the carpet at the back and we'll see how much water comes through. I've done this before so this will be the sec third time I'm doing it. But before that I've got to move this seat forward a bit. trampling all over the carpet at the back, behind, behind the passengers, which I haven't removed yet. I think you can clearly see that we've got a load more water has come through here. Yep, all that. Plus, a load of water has come through here, so there must be another passageway from back to front, not just that one, but the one under this in the corner here. Well, we've had a week of really hot weather, 26 degrees C, and now, after two days of pouring rain, it's slated to be cool for the next infinite period which is exactly what I don't want for the purpose of evaporating water from inside a car. So maybe I can, I can take my dehumidifier from inside the workshop and put it in the car. Maybe put an electric heater in the car and uh, let it all percolate. I should say that uh, a leaking window seal is not the main reason you get water in the football, uh, footwell in, in a Volvo. Um, most people on forums are complaining about leaks from sunroofs or problems with the aircon uh, dripping water into the um, inside of the vehicle. I think I have caused this problem myself because I've got this uh, dash cam here. And very cleverly, Volvo has provided no USB socket up here in the roof lining. So I had to run the cable round the edge of the windscreen and then down under the glove box and across to the one USB socket. Oh, actually, this isn't a USB socket, but it's a cigar lighter, cigarette lighter. The only source of power within miles of, of the relevant point. It's, it's more than 20 years since USB sockets were invented, and there still aren't any in this 2011 uh, Volvo. Uh, anyway, the point is that I just crudely fixed the wire with blue tack along the edge of the windscreen, and from time to time that blue cat tack would come loose, so I would just push at it to um, re-fix uh, it. And I guess... It's the, the presence of that blue tack perhaps gradually hardening and me occasionally pushing on it that has exerted a, a gentle pressure outwards which has eventually caused the windscreen seal to break because the, the, drip, the drip, a very small drip was coming down here. So don't do that if you want to avoid this problem. Oh, this is the rear door, passenger side. I've taken the rear seat out there's a very good video about how to do that, um, which I'll link in the description. It's easy to do. So here we can see the rear carpet, which is all one piece, le left and right. It's a bit of a nuisance. We have a similar problem 
here in that I've got to take these off and uh, unbolt whatever's uh, a bolt underneath that and I don't know if you can see in the it's pretty dark at the moment but uh, the end of the carpet is, is there and uh, it's just tucked under this trim and hopefully under this trim um, so I think I've put the two front seat bolts back in and I'm going to take these off and undo these seat bolts and then I'm hoping that I can ease out this side of it without bothering with that side of it whether that's true or not I don't know I've got these two black plastic things off but I can't tell you what the right way to do it is because I definitely didn't use the right way I used a variety of tools none of which worked and then I used brute force and bloody ignorance um, which succeeded um, let's look at this more carefully so we've got two legs coming back and they've got a slot in them it's that slot that is engaged by some clips inside this like that there's a tab here which is sit underneath that but which does not retain it in any way if we look underneath here you can see there appears to be a clip but that clip does not engage with anything because it's just sitting down here so that's not relevant the clips that are relevant are in the sides of this thing in here and in here now let's take a closer look at that clip those clips I don't know if you can see this but on the inside of this surface there is a, a raised clip which will engage with that slot and then and then on the other side there's also a clip but I'm not quite sure exactly where it is located um, so I can't tell you exactly how to loosen it um, I just I don't know what I did see it goes on so easily comes off with enormous difficulty I think what I did was I just lost my temper with it I think that was the best way of solving this like that right and it's actually funny enough it's come off without breaking so that's one way of doing it and good luck with that well I decided in the end to take the front seat passenger seat out which is uh, fairly straightforward I left the seat tethered to the car because I can't be bothered to undo the uh, seat belt mounting uh, which uh, would re involve removing more trim so after removing the four bolts that hold it down you just need to disconnect this plug which uh, rather oddly has this sprung mounted screw that holds it on uh, you just un undo that and then it, this plug comes off and so now we have access to at least the passenger side of the carpet and I'm hoping that I can get that up without having to disturb the driver's side which I'm extremely reluctant to do well here we are It's up like this, but of course no further. And this is, I don't know if you can see that, absolutely sopping wet. Yeah. And we can see now where this lower dust goes to. It seems to go up here. Where it goes after that, I don't know. But so we've got this dip in the pan, the floor pan here, which allows water to come through this way and we've also got a gap under here in the corner well, it gaps all the way along really, a gap here and a gap here, so we've got to get all of this dry and I've got to sponge this off the 
because I can't be bothered to take the driver's side out. So what I've been doing is putting newspaper under this and then stamping on it and uh, taking it out and repeat to just to get the bulk of the water off. Well, I've been struggling with newspaper for some time and uh, I feel I've got the bulk of the water out of it. still squeezing water on here. A good test is if I just do this I can instantly feel the dampness through here. So there's still water in here. But I think what I'm going to do now is prop this up like this, put my three kilowatt fan heater in here and my dehumidifier out of the workshop. Meanwhile, in the house, I've been drying out the underside of the front carpet using this 2 kilowatt heater that I've had for more than 50 years, inherited from my parents. That seems to be working quite well, actually. Well, I've got it rigged up like this, with the humid dehumidifier <coughs> oh, sitting on where the back seat would be, and my 3 kilowatt Clark fan there and this is one that I've modified to have a higher temperature thermostat on it so I can set this up to over 100 degrees it's still got the safety cut out in it but um, I've used some hemp rope to tie that up there because I didn't want to use nylon or anything in case it melts right well it's taken me about the whole morning to set this up uh, it's now quarter to two. I haven't had any lunch yet. On Saturday, this by chance, the Volvo is booked in for an MOT at 9am on Tuesday. So I've got the weekend, I've got Sunday and Monday, to get it dry and put all the carpets back before the MOT people see it. This is a job that I didn't particularly want which has been thrust upon me by circumstances. And the lesson is don't stick blue tack into the gap between the, <laughs> between the windscreen and the A pillar because it will cause a leak. And that's somebody who's just got a new motorbike going up and down my road. Right, I've taped that up. No water is coming out of the humidifier drain tube yet. Right, I put a thing there so that I can see how much water comes out. And I've put in here a temperature and relative humidity meter. I only just put it in there. It says 27 and 60 percent. We'll see what it settles down to later. Well, I've had my lunch of baked beans and white wine. And it says 48 degrees C, 23 percent humidity, which is good. It actually feels warm here, so it's definitely getting quite hot in there. Nothing has come out of the dehumidifier yet. Well, I've just watched a Steve Summers video for 44 minutes, and we're now at. 54 degrees C and 16 relative humidity. A little water has come out of the dehumidifier. Well, it's quarter to four, and the Met Office said that there was an 80% chance of rain at five o'clock. It's just started spotting, so I put this top all in on, and I'm just hoping there isn't going to be too much wind. Well, I thought the rain had stopped, but actually it's still spotting a little bit. Um, I think the problem with this dehumidifier is it, it's a desiccant dehumidifier um, which is designed to work at low temperatures effective, efficiently. Um, the air temperature in there is 55 degrees C and the rate of humidity is 14% so um, it's probably too hot in there for it to work. 
what I was thinking of doing is just opening the doors and letting the air out. It feels completely dry here. But It's slightly damp on here, at the bottom there, because the hot air is blasting in this direction. So, I think what I'll do is set it, move the heater over here, so it's blasting in this direction. Yes, there is there's still a little a drop of water here where I've squeezed it. So we'll leave it like that for a while, for its next session. It's coming up to five o'clock now, so I suppose I've had the heaters on since lunchtime. I've just opened the door, so the temperature's going down from, it's from 52 to it's now 45. This is all, I would say, Oh, maybe it's just slightly moist here. That's, I'd say it's it's dry enough, and uh, this is actually really warm to the touch. So everything's been. I was a bit worried about overheating the plastic, actually. So I think it's all bone dry down here. Well. Despite it being warm to the touch on here, there's still a little bit of water, I discovered, because I took this piece of plastic thing out and there's a little bit of water underneath in there. So I think I'm going to turn the heater on again and uh, give it a few more hours of heat and then um, turn it off overnight for safety reasons. Well, it's definitely beginning to rain now. So I've packed this up for the night and I've um, weighted it down with bricks plus a couple of uh, ropes at uh, the front and at the back. So I think that will be all right. I must remember just to turn the heater off later on this evening. Well, it's Sunday morning. Uh I just wondered it doesn't feel bone dry oh, it feels it certainly feels cold and wet there or damp but see what happens if I Yes, it's definitely still wet there. So, more. Well, I wonder how much. Right, I wonder if it does that wherever I put it. Right here. Now that is dry. But that's dry. It's just the top here in the middle, perhaps because that's the most difficult bit for me to get at. The most, most difficult bit to get the far, bit near the fire. Trying out is needed. I can hold it in a position there. Well, it's 15.4 degrees C and 70% relative humidity in here. Um, not too bad. very slightly damp and I think it's damp 
temp down there. It's still, it's still not dry. I'm going to turn the humidifier on and close this up and leave it until after lunch. The humidity is actually going up because I've opened the door because it's raining out here. Well, I've had the dehumidifier on by itself without the heater and for two hours and it has extracted a little bit of water and 24.8 degrees C and 32% relative humidity so it's doing quite well and this one which is the front footwell um, is still slightly damp despite ha having two hours of a two kilowatt power on it this morning and a lot more yesterday so it takes a lot to dry out this sponge it's quarter to seven on Sunday uh, it, the dehumidifier has been on all day I wonder if it's uh, it's got quite a, quite a fair amount of water extracted and it says you won't be able to see that but I can read it, it says 26 degrees C, 32% relative humidity. So, I think that's fine. I'm going to turn it off. And tomorrow I'll put it back. Well, it's not a Thursday. Um, so I put the carpets back in on Monday, uh, which I had to do because there was a mot on Tuesday, and uh, naturally it rained all day on Monday, so I had to do it under the tarpaulin, and so it was dark in there and I had to use a torch, so it was all a bit of a pain. Anyway, I got the car back together and it went through its MOT okay, so all is fine. I did not disconnect the battery at all during the whole saga. Uh, but as a consequence of that, because I had to unplug the, the passenger seat to take it out, uh, the onboard computers noticed that and they then put up an error message saying urgent SRS airbag service required. And that is a MOT failure, so that error message had to be reset. I do have an OBD2 uh, software thingy but I left it to the garage to do that resetting. Uh, perhaps if I had disconnected the battery, um, that problem would not have arisen. I think the main lesson of this saga is that it actually takes a long time to dry out the foam under the carpets. You need to allow at least 48 hours with plenty of uh, external heat applied. Um, I probably could have got the rear carpet out of the car by undoing the bolts behind the driver's seat and unbolting the electronic box under the driver's seat, but it looked all a bit cramped and difficult to me and I didn't want to risk the difficulty of not being able to get the carpet back in again and so on. But one advantage of leaving it in the car is that by putting a heater in the car in an enclosed space I could get it up to 52 degrees C and probably it dried out quicker than it would have done had it been in my house so I think that's okay. I've linked in the description two other videos which are worth watching one about uh, how to remove the rear seat and the other a more general one about uh, dealing with this problem in a Volvo so check out those and thanks very much for watching.